So I got this really good question from a viewer. I have 11 years experience in IT and want to switch to cybersecurity. What are your suggestions? The answer to this is gonna be applicable to people who are like not in IT too. Like anyone can benefit from this. Um, and this is basically what happened to me. I was working in IT for a decent amount of time and then I made the switch to cybersecurity. So I'm gonna talk about uh, exactly what I did and it's still relevant today for sure. But before we get into that, my name is Josh Matikor. For those who don't already know, I make a lot of content on IT and cyber security, a lot of ethical content, non-clickbait. The whole idea of it is, is to help you kind of make that career transition as easily and cheaply and as fast as possible. So getting right into the answer to this, basically I would look at the employability framework. So I talk about this like quite a bit on the channel and you can think about this framework in terms of anything like entry-level IT, cybersecurity, being a plumber, right? You can think about this in terms of of everything, right? And different levels of stuff as well, right? So if you're already working in IT for 11 years or you're not working in IT at all, it with but you have the goal of breaking into cybersecurity, just look at this employability framework and be like, okay, like what do I need to do? So for me, um, I had experience already, right? I had some kind of IT experience. I, I didn't really have a portfolio at that time um, and I didn't I, ha uh, I didn't really initially have certifications either. Um, I did have a bachelor's degree. My written communication was okay. My resume is like, eh, because like I didn't have enough relevant cybersecurity stuff. So if you if you think about it, like if you want to break into cybersecurity, for example, you need to be sure to hit all the areas on the employability framework as it pertains to the entry, you know, entry level, the cybersecurity role that you're going to use to break into it the field, whether or not that's like security operations, governance, risk and compliance, some kind of vulnerability management position, whatever. So for me, um, I broke in with security operations. I kind of, my first job was like kind of in a SOC, but my title was like senior information security analyst, but it was basically like a SOC. Um, so what I did, because I already had like some IT experience, but I didn't, I didn't really have official cybersecurity experience and I didn't really have like any certs. Um, so basically when you want to get into a field, look at this stuff. So basically what I did is I got security plus and I ended up getting CISSP. Uh, CISSP was, it's really, really good for HR and getting uh, those initial interviews. Um, there is an experience requirement for CISSP. You basically need to, um, work in I think it's like two of the domains for five years or only four years if you have security plus or any of these other certifications that they list on their site and you can you can work in help desk and you can still be eligible to get CISSP because like maybe you, you work in like identity and access management maybe you're provisioning access to people that's a domain of cybersecurity or maybe you work in hardware security like you're in charge of provisioning and you you're the one who like gives people their laptops and you have to make sure they're they're secure and, and locked up or whatever, you're managing those hardware assets. That's another domain of CSSP. So I do recommend, by the way, we I have like really high quality practice questions for CSSP. Um, definitely recommend checking those out. They're really good and they're free. I, I recommend if you are have experience already, I recommend getting CSSP for sure. It's gonna make your life way easier when you're trying to get interviews. You can still get CSSP if you don't have experience, you'll just have ISC squared. Depending on your ethics, you can put CSSP on your resume if you want. Um, technically, you're not supposed to do that unless you have the five, four or five years of experience. Um, I will say you do need like a sponsor for your CSSP, but this is a, a CSSP. The reason I keep that is to sponsor other people who want to become CSSP. So like email me on my channel email if you need a sponsor. But I do recommend um, getting relevant certifications like as good as you possibly can to help you break in. And then I do recommend making a really nice portfolio. For my portfolio, I, I started making actual YouTube videos. Um, I think I privated them by now because they got they got striked for being like hacking videos or something. So I made some content around cybersecurity and ethical hacking essentially. And I signed up for like the OSCP exam, like offensive security certified professional exam. Um, I didn't get the actual certification, but I, I went through a lot of the labs and I, I, um, I don't know how to say it. I popped a lot of the boxes or I got root access on a lot of the servers. And I talked about that. Um, I put on my resume, first of all, like a, my portfolio. If you don't know how to make a portfolio, watch this video. Um, I put that link to my portfolio on my resume and I kind of talked about what I did in the lab when I actually like got the interview. 
um, CSSP helped me get the interview. And then when I was in the, in the, when I was in the interview, I talked about the labs and like everything that I did, um, in my, like, I don't remember anymore cause I don't really care about pen testing, but I talked about like pen testing methodology and like how, what I, I use the tactics, techniques, and procedures I used to root some of the boxes. And they were just really impressed with that because if you know how to attack something or you at least have some kind of idea or framework, then you, you know how to defend it, uh, in theory, better than somebody who doesn't know how to attack because you know the straws you have to grasp for when you're trying to compromise a system, right? So it gives you an intuition of how to defend it. And that's what a lot of my students have done. Um, I'm not I'm not trying to sell my course. I probably won't put a link to it in this video, but a lot of the students in my course, we have this lab where we build essentially a sock in the cloud. We defend against live attack traffic from the internet. We practice incident response and it's it's really involved. And there's some nice graphics we make in there plotting the you know malicious actors location around the world. And it's just a really, um, it's a really, really good lab that showcases your ability to do security operations and your understanding of incident response, uh, like in accordance with like NIST 861, like industry standards. It, it shows that you understand all of that. And if you do that lab like four or five times, it's gonna be so easy for you to talk about and articulate yourself well in your interview. So. Basically, I, I recommend you know making sure your resume is squared away as possible. Watch this video, God tier cybersecurity resume. Get relevant certifications if you really want to make breaking in easy. Of course, you don't need to, but it helps. Make a nice portfolio. Put some nice projects on there. Do the projects many times so you can articulate it well once you get an interview, and then you should be good to go. And you might be noticing like the employability framework it says like education. Like you're worried you don't have a bachelor's degree. You don't need like every single one of these boxes on here. Like if you don't have a degree, you don't need it, but it will be beneficial to you if you make up for that lack of degree in another area, like having a really impressive project, um, having like a really decent resume. You can make experience for yourself. Like, you know, you can start a, a company like Jane Doe Cybersecurity, Cybersecurity LLC and you can publish a lot of content for it make yourself a presence on LinkedIn. You can do like a daily security plus poll, like a question or something like this. You can get an audience and then you can have something tangible to point to on your resume. Um, basically what I'm saying, just look at the employability framework and think about it as it pertains to cybersecurity. Look at where you're missing stuff, like where your gaps are and work to fill in those gaps and then you should be good to go. Of course, we have security plus practice questions. There's over 1500 in that deck with answer explanations and everything. So this will help you with your journey to get security plus. We also have a CSSP practice question deck, over a thousand questions in there, high quality questions with explanations to the answers. That will help you do what you can. Uh, employability framework, do a gap analysis on yourself, fill in all the gaps, and then yeah, you'll be good to go eventually. Thanks for watching.